Good morning and welcome, and a special welcome to all the visitors and those listening on the radio that we have with us today. Today we celebrate the Transfigure Figuration of the Lord. Our entrance hymn is from the Glory and Praise, number 656, Christ Be Our Light, number 656, verses 1, 2, and 5. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Before we continue, I just want to say hello. My name is Father Anthony Gerber, and I am your new associate. Uh, And so it is a pleasure to be with you. Again, it's Father Gerber. Think of baby food, and you have my last name. (laughs) I'm also the old man of the... The rectory, as uh, I am just a few months older than Father Nemeth, uh, and so that's wonderful. <laughs> but it's a delight to be with you, and I look forward to serving as your priest. Brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the alone are the most high Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son confirmed the mysteries of faith by a witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship. Grant, we pray, to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair on his head was white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning. If you arrived late this morning, do not worry. You have a new associate that is very, very much... Uh, nearsighted, so that's one of the, the gifts that you have, is that I can't see you coming in 
uh, I am still street legal, so I can drive, but, but if you come in late, I won't see you. So there you are. It's a blessed day for the parish. <laughs> Today we experience the great transfiguration of our Lord, which is the fourth luminous mystery of the Holy Rosary of our Blessed Virgin Mary. The transfiguration reveals our Lord's divinity and as well the possibility of us becoming saints, to be transformed like he is. After all, in the Old Testament, Moses, when he encountered God in the mountain of Sinai, his face as well became radiant like the sun, and Moses had to veil his face. There is a change that comes upon us when we are in the presence of our Lord, and we are in that very presence right now, because he is here. Jesus is here in the Eucharist. The question then is whether or not we believe in the power of Jesus' transforming grace in our lives. After all, we receive in the Eucharist his body, his blood, his soul, and his divinity. And it is his divinity that glows and shines and is radiant this day. It is that divinity that you receive every time in the Eucharist. Do you believe in that transforming power of Jesus in the Eucharist? For me, I saw just a little inclination of that change before I became a priest. See, before I became a priest, I was a seminarian, and as a seminarian almost 12 years ago, I was looking for a chalice. And my family at one point was very wealthy. My dad owned a steel fabricating company that provided steel for car manufacturers. My mom, she worked in real estate and sold million-dollar houses back in the 80s when a million dollar house was quite rare. Eventually, however, my parents divorced. My dad was a raging alcoholic. Dad eventually became quite ill and he passed away. It was my mom then who raised us four children. My two older brothers, both who became doctors. They're married to wonderful wives and, and have kids. And my younger sister, who became a nurse anesthetist. It's also kind of a doctor. She's married with four kids. So they're all physical doctors. I'm the spiritual doctor. <laughs> Their patients will eventually die. Hopefully my patients will live forever. <laughs> it was my mom then who raised us four kids by herself, and we didn't have a lot of money then. And so as a seminarian, I kind of wondered how it was that I would ever have enough money to buy a chalice. Because chalices are kind of expensive. And I would see other seminarians coming, uh, other deacons coming to the seminary, having just received this wonderful chalice from their family, they who are about to become priests. I kind of had chalice envy. <laughs> so I went to a place, it's called the Office of Reclamations. In the Office of Reclamations, many years ago, it was... It was a room that kind of looked like a safe, and, and it had some chalices along the walls. If you've ever seen Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, it was kind of like that. I just didn't want to choose poorly. So I looked through the chalices, and immediately I was kind of disappointed, because all the chalices were kind of short and squat and brass. And just kind of from an age of iconoclasm in the church, when things weren't nearly as beautiful as this church. Which, by the way, I don't know what I did to receive such a treasure as you and this wonderful church, but I thank God for that. <laughs> so there I was, searching for the chalice, and I saw none that I liked. And then out of the corner of my eye, I saw a little chalice that was kind of bent in three places. It looked like it had been buried, but it was at least taller than the others. And I said, maybe if I clean that up, it might have some dignity for the great Eucharist that we receive. And so I asked the deacon a question that I've, I've always found very fruitful in my own spiritual life. And the question was this, deacon, is it worth saving? I literally said that. Not that dramatically. I said, deacon, is it worth this saving? <laughs> and he said, sure, you can have it. I didn't pay one dollar for it. He said, here, you can just have it. 
So I took it. And I started asking some of my brother seminarians where I should clean this chalice or how I should do it and get it replated. He said, well, there's only one place that does it in the United States. It's Adrian Hamer's out in New York, in Brooklyn. So I said, okay, fine. So I sent it out there in a box. I should note that I wasn't very prompt in doing this. I had let that chalice roll around in my front seat passenger side for about three weeks. I sent it off. Again, it didn't look like anything. It looked like it was made of pewter. So I sent it off. About a week later, I got a phone call. It was from Mrs. Hamers herself. I was driving on the road. Yes, I took the phone call on the road. And she said, are you the seminarian who sent this chalice? I said, yes. She said, are you the seminarian who sent this chalice without insuring it? Yes. Why? And then in a thick Brooklyn accent, she said, honey, when you send something like this, you need to insure it. I said, oh? She's like, you don't know what you have, do you? Obviously, I don't. She said, you have a pure sterling silver chalice that was made in 1923 in Paris, France. As is, it's worth about $10,000. And when we are done with it, you should probably insure it for fifteen. I pulled my car back on the road. <laughs> I kind of had that vision of Antiques Roadshow you know, 1923, sterling silver chalice, ten to $15,000 on the bottom. They sent that chalice back to me after a few months of taking care of it, cleaning it up, and they sent it back in a black box with red velvet on the inside, and get this, white gloves. White gloves. I have a chalice that you can hold with white gloves. And I opened up the box, and I was like, it had a little case, and it was in a, in a bag, and I, a black bag, and I opened it up, and I looked at it, and I said, that can't be my chalice. There's no way. They've clearly made a mistake. They've swapped out a pewter chalice for this beautiful, beautiful, ornate French chalice. But I could see just a little bit of a bent, a little bit of a mark. I said, oh my goodness, that is really it. It had been changed so dramatically. And to think that I had started off that whole quest with a simple question, Deacon, is it worth saving? From that moment on, I realized that that chalice is really kind of an indicator of my soul, and maybe hopefully yours. That if you are sullied by the, the grossness, the, the bentness of sin, if you think that you can't possibly become a saint, well, I tell you, brothers and sisters, by the grace of God, you and I can become saints, gloriously radiant in the splendor of God. If that little chalice can be changed in such a way, so too can you and I. The transfiguration proves it. You receive our Lord's divinity at every holy mass. If this were your only communion, there would be enough grace there to change you into the greatest of saints, to be like Christ. Let us pray then, brothers and sisters, that we may never despair of salvation, that we may never despair of holiness, that no matter how bent we've been over the, our years in growing up, no matter how dirty our souls, that if we come to him with repentance, with open hearts, we indeed can be changed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great confidence, our, our Heavenly Father's saving grace, we bring to him now our petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray as well for all bishops and clergy throughout the world, that they may tend to the flock of Christ with a shepherd's care. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country, our great land. We pray that our Lord may protect us from all error and evil, and that, they, that all who govern us will govern with the wisdom of God. We pray to the Lord. And for our parish and community, that we may be renewed by the grace of the Holy Spirit and walk in the ways of holiness, we pray to the Lord. For an increase of holy vocation to the sacred priesthood, the religious life, the married life, the consecrated life, and for a renewal of these beautiful vocations, we pray to the Lord. For all who carry the cross this day, that they may be strengthened and consoled by the presence of Jesus who helps them to carry their cross, we pray to the Lord. And for all of our beloved dead. May they be welcomed now into the company of the holy angels and saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. God, our almighty Father, on this great feast of the transfiguration, you strengthen our hearts by revealing your Son's divinity and as well the possibility of our sanctification. We beg you through Jesus' intercession, hear the prayers that we've placed before you and answer them in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. As our gifts are being prepared, please join in singing from the glory and praise number 694. Let all mortal flesh keep silent, number 694.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings made here to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor cleanse us from the stains of sin, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form, which shares with all humanity that scandal of the cross might be rem removed from the hearts of his disciples, and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty. Without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living in truth, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands 
and with eyes raised to heaven, to, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hand, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us to the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. We sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make you manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again for your warm welcome to this wonderful parish. Uh, again, I look forward to serving you all as, as your associate uh, pa pa pastor and priest. Uh, just as an aside, it's, it's a joy that I get to be here, being that uh, my mom's family uh, was, again, originally from uh, the St. Genevieve area. It's also going to be wonderful because well before I was a seminarian, I was a high school teacher. That was my occupation. I was a little later of vocation. And as God should will it, I'll be teaching the seniors over in the high school. So, so that's kind of a delight for me. Um, I, I, the rest of you about me you'll get to know as we go along, although I will say I do have a Jeep and I do like to go on trails so <laughs> and go outside. So I hope to meet you all and, and to learn more about you and, and your families and ultimately that can lead you to, to Jesus and, and to heaven and to becoming great saints. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, Immaculate Heart of Mary, St. Joseph, Pray for us. 